Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman with Nerd on the Street, and today I'm talking about my trip to System 76 HQ in Denver, Colorado. Alright, so the strangest thing happened last month, guys. The most bizarre thing happened. So you might have seen, a couple of months ago, I posted my full review of my System76 Serval Workstation laptop. Great laptop. I made a two hour review video on it. There were some things wrong with it that I talked about in the review. So I made that review. And back in the fall, when I made the laptop unboxing, I had tweeted at System76 showing them the unboxing, and they had retweeted the unboxing. And I ended up getting a few more viewers because of that. System76 doesn't have the largest social media following, but, you know, they retweeted it, so I got some new viewers. So when I published the review, I thought, hey, I'll tweet it at System76, see if I don't get a couple extra viewers, you know, make a couple extra bucks off of this video. And I was disappointed when System76 did not retweet my tweet, but instead they responded to my tweet saying, hey, you should enter our System76 super fan contest. Now, one of the reasons I was surprised they said that was because if you go and watch the video, I specifically say that I'm not a super fan of System76. I don't know if I used that wording, but I, I list off a bunch of stuff toward the end of the video that I actually don't like about System76. They act like Ubuntu is the only... They don't really push Linux. They push Ubuntu is the thing. Brag about their stupid little Ubuntu key that they've got instead of the Windows key. And they say it's a search-based operating system. Search in Ubuntu and stock Ubuntu with Unity sucks. They claim that they're doing these things. All that System76 did was submit a bug report and send a laptop to NVIDIA for them to test this on. So imagine my surprise when I enter Displaced and the Extra Life livestream that Nerd on the Street did last year as two separate entries into System76's super fan contest which the criteria is just things that you have done with Linux. I enter those two things in and imagine my surprise when I get an email the next week saying that I had won the super fan contest. Now if you go and actually look at the blog post that System76 posted announcing the contest winners, they linked my server review as my winning entry. I never actually entered that into the contest, to be clear. Like I said, one of the entries that I submitted was Displaced, um, Season 2 particularly, but just Displaced, and then I uh, embedded the behind the scenes editing video as part of that entry and then my other entry was the Nerd of the Street Extra Life 2016 live stream and I made a little Imgur album of some behind the scenes photos from that and apparently System76 was impressed because like I said I had won the contest and that meant that System76 bought me plane tickets to Denver put me up in a hotel room for two nights and invited me to this three-day event where I got to go and hang out at the System76 headquarters. And that was really, really cool. Now I recorded an earlier version of this video where I went and talked about every single thing that we did at System76. I did like a play-by-play -play of the whole weekend. That video turned out super long, and even though I covered what we did in really great detail, I didn't feel like it really did justice to the whole thing. So I'm just going to talk a little bit more superficially about what it was like going and meeting System76, and then in a little bit coming up, I'll have some footage of some System76 products that I took while I was there. So this was the first time that I had ever been to a Linux community thing. And you have to understand, I am a, a believer in Linux, a believer in open source, and in software freedom, Libre software. I'm a believer in all of those things. And here at Nerd on the Street, I make sure that I'm using Linux and open source things whenever I can. And when I can, I make sure that the other people helping me with Nerd on the Street are also using Linux and things. But at Nerd on the Street, I'm really the only one who cares about Linux. You know, you guys who just watch the tech channel, you only know me, but if you go and watch the gaming channel and the entertainment channel, there are a bunch of other people who help me with stuff here at Nerd of the Street, and they just don't care about Linux. They don't. Um, the only reason that Adam is using Linux on his computer is because his Windows key broke, he was borrowing the Windows key from me originally, and I put Linux on his computer. Um, and then he still uses a MacBook more than he uses his actual Linux desktop. I tried getting Michael into Linux a long time ago, 
and he gave up on it after about two weeks, and he's using a Windows desktop every day for his, his main machine, and he uses Macs for his secondary machines. I am the sole reason why Nerd on the Street uses Linux, and, you know, I'm Nerd on the Street, I'm in charge, so if I say we're using Linux, we're using Linux, so that's fine, but constantly, constantly, especially over on the creative channel when we're making Displaced, I'm constantly having to justify my reasoning for using Linux. And you you probably, if you're a Linux user, you know how taxing it is to constantly have people asking you, you could do this way easier on Windows, why don't you just use Windows? You know, this software, you can do this on Windows, why are you doing this on Linux if it's taking you three times as long? Constantly having to answer those kinds of questions and constantly having to re-explain Linux philosophy and open source philosophy and why I care about it and just having the people that I'm talking to just generally not be receptive. It gets taxing. So this was the first time I had been to a Linux community event and it was so refreshing to be in a, a room that was just filled with people who all use Linux by choice. They all know that Linux is better than Windows and they all choose to use Linux, they, they all care about Linux, and most of them care about open source, and some of them care about software freedom. Now, I didn't agree with every single thing that everyone at this company said, and I didn't agree with every single thing I heard come out of everyone's mouths, because Linux is a diverse community, uh, and there are lots of different opinions about things. There are lots of, you know, licensing, and just pricing structures in general, not to mention just software preferences, you know, there's tons of, of divisions in the Linux community, but this was the first time I had ever been somewhere with a bunch of other people and we weren't arguing about which is better, Linux or Windows, we're arguing about which is better, Ubuntu or Arch, you know, we're arguing about whether Canonical is in the wrong or Red Hat for the whole Wayland Mir split that happened. We're not talking about how it's stupid that we're using Kaden Live instead of Premiere. We're talking about how Kaden Live is really great compared to OpenShot. You know, the just the 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 setting, the background of the conversation, just the structure is so different. Uh, when you just start with that base assumption that you know what we're gonna have conversations and we're gonna have, you have disagreements we're gonna we're gonna have agreements on some things but all of it's happening with a base just understanding that no matter what we're all Linux users that was really cool so I'll talk a little bit more about that toward the end of the video the first night that I arrived in Denver um, I went up with somebody else I actually I sat down in the airport here in St. Louis just sat down next to a stranger in the airport and I was wearing my Linux action show jacket and then this just random stranger that I had sat down by held up his uh, his contest invitation, his System76 contest invitation and said, hey, are you here for this too? So that was really cool. His name was Josh and he works on autonomous cars that use Linux for the software end. So I stuck with him on the way to Denver and then when I got to Denver um, Thursday night, a System76 employee met us at the hotel. We went up and hung out for a little bit at the System76 office, and then we went out for dinner that night, and yeah, like I said, just really cool, just having conversations with a bunch of, of Linux users. The next day, Friday, it was like the main event. It was the Superfan event, Superfan 2. This is the second time System76 has done this, and for Friday, System76 had uh, sort of structured things set up for us to do. They gave us these at the beginning of the day, and you can see uh, this was like the branding for the whole weekend, Legend of the Lake, because System76 just released their new uh, KB Lake line of computers. They updated all their computers with Intel 7th generation processors. And on the back of this, we got like, this is like a D&D &D player card, which I played D&D &D a little bit before, but not like, not seriously. Um, so I kind of knew what was going on, but not really. But yeah, it was like this, this D&D slash LARPing type themed thing where they had a bunch of structured events. Some of the stuff we did was kind of cool. Like, uh, they had a 3D printed EKG machine that kind of uses the, the temperatures and, and pressure in your head to figure out what you're, th uh, well, not what you're thinking, but figure out how you're thinking. I got to fly a drone for the first time, a little quadcopter. Uh, that was really cool. I had never gotten to fly a drone before. The rest of the stuff was kind of just gimmicky. I mean, we there was a, a time when we just played some video games, and I got to try out a Steam controller for the first time. And I personally still like the Xbox 360 controller better than the, the Steam controller. I just felt like my hands were too 
close together with the Steam controller and but yeah it was cool because I you know the Steam controller is coveted in the Linux community because uh, Valve is really good to Linux they have been recently at least so um, so yeah it was awesome to get to try out that controller they had a couple of uh, 3d printers at the the office and I got this little 3d printed keychain it's it's a bow because my weapon that I got for my player card was a bow and arrow and then uh, apparently there's little holes in this and I I'm apparently able to string it and shoot little toothpicks out of it if I want to. So yeah, that's kind of neat that I got this little, you know, 3D printed keychain. Honestly, I was not feeling the whole D&D &D thing. Like it, you know, my favorite part of this whole event, honestly, was the unstructured portions. The dinner Thursday night when we were all just at a, at a bar restaurant type thing, eating pizza and talking about Linux. That was like one of the more fun times. I had a really great time Friday night. So after all of the structured stuff ended on Friday, it was just a party for the rest of the night. And I stayed at System76. I left at midnight. Apparently they closed the office at like 1.30 a.m. I left at midnight. Things were kind of slowing down by the time that I left, but um, I had so many good conversations that night. At one point, I had like a three-hour conversation, like legit three-hour conversation with Ben was one of the other super fans that, that won the contest, and he's a game developer, video game developer for Linux, and then Matt, one of the System76 employees. Me and Ben and Matt just had like three hours worth that we were just standing there talking about all kinds of things. We started out talking about profitability of software on Linux, how we can get Linux game developers to to be able to make more money so that more people develop for Linux. Started talking about the differences between different distributions and the value of distributions versus um, you know the value of a universal installer or more of a commonalities between distros, whether that's a good or a bad thing. We talked about display servers, Wayland, Mir, why Mir happened and whose fault it was and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. We talked about Linux in pop culture. We talked about Linux in just, you know, Linux in culture in general and how we can proliferate Linux better. And at this event, uh, just so you guys have an idea, I was super surprised that I won this contest and that this company was flying me out to their headquarters because I'm 18. Like, I am I was the minimum age possible for this contest. I was the youngest person at this thing. And most of the people who won this contest were developers. Some of them were, like, IT people, which it was cool to talk to them because I'm going into IT for my day job. Most of these people were developers that, were, that won the contest, and most of the people at the System76 office were developers or engineers of one sort or another. And I was there, even though I am training myself in IT at school, I was there as a a video production person, and there was media at the event. Uh, I got to meet Brian Lunduke. I had seen lots of his stuff before. That was awesome, getting to meet him. Michael Dominic from Jupiter Broadcasting, I got to see him. But in terms of like the non-media people, like the actual contest winners, I was pretty much the only one who whom I claim to fame was... YouTube, basically, like making videos online. And it was really cool. I thought I would feel more out of place in this room than I did. I had a commonality with all these developers because I use Linux. And really what it comes down to when we're trying to figure out how to get more people to use Linux is people are only gonna gonna listen to developers up to a certain point, and then you need people like me who aren't developers saying that Linux is easy enough to use for the average person. And also for video production on the creative side, um, you know, we need, we need successful creative people using Linux to get more creative people to use Linux. People making videos tend to look at what popular people are using and use that. So the whole idea behind Nerd on the Street Creative is we want to get popular making creative videos, and then hopefully in the future, people who want to get into video production will see that we use Linux, and then they'll copy us. So yeah, we talked about that kind of thing, like how to get more people using Linux. We just, we there, there was so much stuff we talked about. That was a really cool conversation. Before that though, after the structured day ended, oh, and at the end of the structured day, we had like a two hour group interview session. It was maybe like an hour and a half group interview section where all eight of the super fans were in a room with one of the System76 employees and we were just going around uh, and they were passing a microphone around, we were on video and we were just talking about how we got into Linux, our experiences with Linux, things like that. Uh, and I hope to see, I don't, I haven't seen any of the footage from that online yet, I hope System76 publishes some of that because there were some great moments from everyone in there. Right after the end of all of System76's structured events, 
Um, but before I had that that three hour conversation with Ben and Matt, where we were just talking about everything Linux and open source philosophy, one of the other people I met was Sam, and I sat next to him at dinner on Thursday. Sam is like one of the nicest people, super nice guy, and he uh, he also got picked as a super fan because he made a YouTube video. However, he's not like super professional into YouTube like I am. And when I say that, I'm not saying that I'm professional, but like I'm attempting to be professional. His is more of a casual like vlogging style channel, but he's actually an IT guy as his day job, uh, which is exactly what I'm trying to do for my day job. So it was really cool to talk to him, talk about what things he's seen in the IT field and where he thinks that the IT field was going. And I did not bring any of my video production equipment to Denver because System76 in their their welcome letter, or their, their invitation that they had sent out, I can't show it right now because I've got it pinned up on my bulletin board, but I took some video of it earlier. I took some video of it when I first took it out of the box. They had said like, don't wear any logos. Yeah, basically just don't wear any logos. But I took from that that they weren't wanting us to promote ourselves. It was more about System76. So I didn't bring any of my, my video equipment, but Sam did. He brought a couple of video cameras. And so right after all of the structured stuff ended, the first thing that I did was I went up to Sam and I said, hey, you want to do a collaboration video? And me and him and one other person, Jay, the three of us went in a room at System76 and one at a time we just pulled, uh, there was a, a corner of the System76 office where they just had all of the products that they are currently selling. And then they also had a rack with all of their old products, but they had like all of their current products up and running. So one at a time we pulled the laptops into this private little room and just recorded a few minutes of footage on each of them just because like that's something I normally don't get to do and you can tell a little bit more about a product when you have it hands-on even in a video you know hands-on is different from the promotional images that System76 puts out themselves. So yeah we recorded a few minutes for each of the laptops and then we also recorded a few minutes for each of the desktops so at this point in the video I'm just gonna go ahead and play all of that footage. Alright so this is the first laptop that we're looking at today this is the System76 Lemur um, it's just called Lima, right? Like, yeah, it's you know, a Lima. Nothing after it, yeah. So this is uh, their lowest end laptop. It's the smallest one they've got. It's a 14 inch screen. And I was actually super impressed by this, seeing it in person, how nice the build quality is. Um, looking at the pictures online, you know, you expect some of the lower end laptops to be kind of cheaper, but, um, you know, plasticky. And I don't know if you know what material this is. Yeah, so I don't know actually what material this is. I just know that the build quality is really nice. I mean, there's a little bit of flex here, but there's yeah. not a lot. Like some Walmart laptops literally like cave in like that yeah. much. Um, so this is actually pretty sturdy. One so thing, the, yeah, I was particularly impressed with the keyboard. Right. And see here, there's like very little flex. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a big guy when it comes to flex. There's some flex in the keyboard here, mm -hmm. but it's actually way better than you'd get with like any other uh, off-brand computer yeah. that you'd find like just anywhere. Yeah. I mean, these keys don't wiggle around. These are, this right. is a solid chick the keyboard. Yep. With a custom Ubuntu key, that's not a sticker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just a pretty nice trackpad here. I liked this trackpad better than... Um, the, the lowest quality laptop we're going to look at next, the uh, Galago, is that the 15 inch one? Or the ga the 15 inch one is the Oryx, I believe. Is the one below thinking? that. The one below There's that one the between circle? the Oryx and the... No, that's above the Oryx. Oh, okay. I so, think it's okay. called the Galago, but the, the 15 inch laptop has a, uh, a less Gazelle? nice keyboard. And a, yeah, the Gazelle, that's oh, yeah, what it is. Yeah, because the Galago was, a, was several generations Yeah, ago. they don't make yeah, that they, they split the they split the Galago into, into the Oryx, into the Lemur. So the Galago was 14 inch. This is now the 14 inch, but it's not as powerful as like the Galago, but the Oryx is, so they split the line into two different directions. So, right. Yeah, Gazelle, I knew it started with a G. Yeah, so um, so yeah, this has a, a pretty nice trackpad. Like I like the feeling of this. Um, it's certainly not metal, but it's not too smushy. Um, and then, yeah, the screen's there and... 1080p. Yeah. So 1080p screen. So I actually own I own this machine, and I've I've actually owned the previous generation. Um, so the the one thing I like about this machine personally is that it runs VMs like a dream. Like I'm constantly segregating my workloads into like several different virtual machines, mm -hmm. and it almost seems to never get like hot. I've seen other laptops where the temperature you run one VM and the temperature just spikes. So it runs VMs really well. It stays cool. I get about. On mine, again, mine is the previous generation, it's not this one. I get about six to eight hours of battery life. It really depends on how hard I'm working it. Obviously, I'm running a bunch of VMs on it. Yeah. Um, it basically will tank the battery quite relatively quickly, but I'll still get four or five hours. Um, this one is refreshed with, with the KB Lake, as far as I understand. 
and mine was a previous gen, so I don't have like the brand, the, you know, the newest chipset right. um, for that matter. Yeah, but it keeps have... up with my workload, and I'm very demanding. So yeah, um, so yeah, obviously we. I don't know if I even know the password for this. And also, it should uh, be System Seventy Six. Oh, okay. And right now we have Unity Eight running on here, so this Ooh. isn't what you'll actually get if you uh, go out and get one of these today. But um, you'll get Unity right. Seven because that's Correct. the actual stable one. But yeah, Unity Eight. It's built on Qt, and it's. Uh, Pretty different. Um, yes. Is this using Mir? Do you know, or is it? I don't know. I know that it's uh, Unity 8 running on Qt, but I don't okay. know if it's uh, you know what it's running. And I, I do know that I don't know if like Unity 8 is running uh, normal X11 non Mir apps yet. But I know that was kind of like something that, that Canonical is working on. Yeah. Don't know if they're quite there yet, but um, yeah, this is Unity 8. This is what's going to feature in a future version of Ubuntu. Yeah. And I was playing with this earlier, and you know there are plenty of broken things in here because obviously Unity 8 isn't ready yet. It's not shipping yet. Um, but yeah, so I was mainly for the video just focusing on like the hardware. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've tried out the webcam. I have not. I'm not a webcam kind of person. Yeah, neither like, am I. I have an actual camera yeah. that I use, and that's basically. I don't use the mic. I don't use the camera. I actually have like a. I think it's called a Meteor mic that I use. That I plug in via USB and I just direct my input from that. So I don't have any experience whatsoever there. Um, a couple things I, I could mention here. Uh, we have like the uh, hardware Ethernet jack. Not everybody yeah. does that anymore. Especially so, in smaller laptops. Exactly. So I mean, the bigger laptops, right? You could probably expect that, but um, that that's good. Um, especially if you're at a hotel with really crummy Wi-Fi and they just have the cable. Um, that that really helps because some people actually need that. So we have USB three. Um, so this this I don't actually have on mine. So this must be like a newer. Um, is that like a USB C port? Yeah, that's I what I want to say. Okay, I like the fact that there's a separate port for the for the headphone and the microphone because yeah. that's been very problematic for me. I don't understand why they you know some companies want to combine those two things. They're two completely different things. Right. Um, so I like being able to you know plug my headphones in there and not worry about it accidentally being considered a, a you know a, a device other than what it actually is. Mm -hmm. So um, HDMI power goes right there on the side. Yeah. Um, of course, I already showed that, and that's the uh, SD card slot, I believe, or yep. I could be wrong on that. Um, USB. Uh, oh, actually, that looks like a bigger thing than yeah, SD. It looks bigger than SD. Yeah. I'm not actually sure what that is. It's just a, a media card of some sort. Yeah. And that's the VGA for those of you, which is those people that work at companies that never want to upgrade to HDMI, which is actually tens of thousands of those companies. So yeah. it's probably a good reason for that to actually be there. Yeah. Uh, if we turn this sideways to the camera here, uh, one thing, just looking online, something you can't tell just by looking at the pictures is how this kind of hinge that goes under the laptop works. I don't know. Yeah. Wait. So, um, see the hinge is right here. But yeah. The battery elevates it a little bit, um, which I actually like. Yeah. So when you, when you close it, it's flush. Um, it actually is flush with the laptop. And mm -hmm. when you open it up. Yeah, set it down on the table and do it. Sure. When you, sure thing. So when you open it up, you can see that there's kind of like a little um, groove right there. It kind of keeps the display a little bit further back from the keyboard so you're not just like, you know, up close to the screen. Yeah. Um, I think we might be out of battery. Actually, um, <laughs> oh, no, oh no, it went to s still on. Yeah, okay. So I guess the display uh, just went dead. Or but something. yeah, when you uh, when you turn the screen, like when you change the angle of the screen, does that affect the height of how much is propped up at all? Um, or does it? Ever uh, so, yeah, it does actually. Um, and one thing I can say is that the um, brightness is really down on this because um, at least with mine. The brightness is actually really, really, really good. And I'm not actually sure on Unity 8 how to turn that up. Let me see if the hotkeys will maybe do it. So I think it's function F9. Um, Must not be uh, it might, working maybe on the, this development well, build. The pack, there's a package called X Backlight that needs to be installed. And if that's not ah. installed, then you will not be able to do that. So um, you won't get Unity 8. It, obviously, your, your function keys will work on the production yeah. final build of this. But I know that I can tell you the screen is a heck of a lot brighter than this. Hmm. So yeah. it's actually one of the best screens I've ever seen on one of these. Yeah. So yeah, I, I wanted especially to record a little bit of footage on the lemur because I was expecting it as the lowest end option that they offer to be kind of a cheaper build. Uh, but yeah, I was pretty impressed actually with yeah. uh, how solidly it's put together. This is the one I this is the one I chose. Uh, previous gen, but still looks it looks mine looks exactly the same with few ports are different. I don't have USB C, but essentially it's 99% the same. Yeah. So, All right, so this is the second laptop we're looking at, the uh, System76 Gazelle. So we'll take that off the side. So yeah, this is the Gazelle, it's 15 inches, right? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's 15. It's got a pretty nice finish on it. Um, I don't know. Is, 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 that, is that plastic? I think. I it's, think it's plastic, but it's yeah. uh, you know it's a textured plastic. Yeah, so it feels it feels very looks nice. Looks more like metal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can look around. On the back, we got the battery, which I would love. Yeah, to. battery pops I'll, out. I'll pull that out here in a minute. Out. And it actually has a CD-ROM drive in or DVD yeah, drive. Yeah. So the lemur didn't have a, a optical drive, mm -hmm. but if you if you need a laptop with an optical drive, Gazelle I think is your only option at this point from System yeah. 76. Uh, they got a USB 3.0. Is that a USB 2.0 next to it? Yep, it Is looks like it. And then, uh, yeah, separate audio in and out. We yeah. talked about that with the lemur. That's nice. They have those separated. The speakers are downward facing on the front of it. Yeah. And you got an SD card slot right there. Actually. Uh, that's it's, that weird thing that it is supports also on the uh, SD card and oh, uh, that is SD. MM, yeah, and also the uh, what the heck's it called? It's the Sony stuff, memory right. stick. Yeah. Uh, then on the other side, here we got what? We got two USB 3.0 ports. Yep, HDMI mm -hmm. and VGA, mm -hmm. and uh, hardware to Ethernet. Yep. And then obviously yeah. power. So we open this thing up. So I was talking earlier about how I was really impressed with the the lemurs build quality. I actually think that I don't that, you know this is just my opinion. I think the Gazelle is the least uh, nice build quality on any of the laptops I've seen here, mm -hmm. um, just because like the you know the keys on the keyboard. It is a chiclet keyboard, which is great, but uh, the keys do wiggle around a bit. So yeah, the uh, the keys do slightly move around a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can bad. see that wiggle. No, it's not that bad, but it's just um, when you're typing on it, it I think it feels more plasticky than the uh, the lemur. But yeah, yeah that, and that's just me. The um, Keypad or the touchpad is a bit bigger than the uh, than the one on the lemur was, and it takes up the entire amount of space, which is nice. It doesn't have a big gap on it, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's probably the most smeary out of all of them. Um, so yeah, if you're this would be the lower end option, and then the higher end option would be the uh, Oryx if you're looking for a 15 inch. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is a nice if you're looking for a cheap 15 inch laptop. Uh, you can the the thing like it's not bad like I said but uh, I just think you can tell this one's plastic more than you can tell that the lemur's plastic. I don't know what you think about it. Um, I, like, I like the screen. Yeah. I like the bezel on it that's nice. It's not obtrusive it's obviously not super tiny either. Yeah. Um, I do like the fact that the the trackpad is well integrated into the, uh, the front of the computer there. Yeah. It has, it has a nice lip for to help define it and everything. Mm-hmm. Now here's the real question. How's it feel? I wonder how the how the mouse detection is because my palm is kind of on it like that. Hmm. This does have a uh, numeric keypad on it, so right. that means that the touchpad is over. Yeah, but uh, then that that inner key is a little on the small side too. Oh, over here. Oh yeah, yeah that's that, interesting. That, that, that is that. peculiar, isn't it? Yeah. And then you got a half zero there um, too. Hmm. So now what did? What? That, that might be good for the person who needs possibly a number pad. Yeah, if you need a full size, because I know my uh, my servile is well all right i'm trying to figure out why did they need to make the inner key smaller uh the keyboard shorter that's my guess hmm. i'm comparing it to the um you know the bonobos keyboard over here so this has the full-sized arrow keys too it does but then if you notice the zero key is also short right I'll cut up a little yeah the zero it's key not, is short over here it's mi i'm hmm so about this big with my scientific measuring, I know it's about the same actually. I think that if you notice, there's these right here go to edge to edge, and that's chiclet, and that might be what took up all the extra space. Oh, yeah, yeah, the space between the keys that would make mm -hmm. sense. Other than that, it's a it's a nice little laptop. Yeah, and it's uh, it's in the middle of the price range, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it's above the lemur, um, mm -hmm. but it's below the Oryx. So the Oryx is like so I think it's like eight hundred. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think it might be about eight hundred dollars, yeah. give or take. Oh yeah, you also have notification lights here on the front. So yeah, personally, I'd recommend if you're looking for something cheap to go with the lemur, and if you're looking for a fifteen inch, go with the Oryx. But if you do need the cheapest possible, but you're looking for a fifteen inch, then uh, this is an option that's available. So yeah, if you don't need like uh, dedicated graphics, it's a nice basic pick. Maybe we should also take a shot of the the vents here. Yeah. The fact they're not covered by freaking stickers. I don't know why the hell they do that. Uh, and then, uh, you know what, let me shut it down correctly. And let's check out that battery. Okay. We didn't take the battery out of the lemur. Oh, well that's uh, fine. That's, I mean, yeah. Things you'll get over. <laughs> we can always get that later. Okay, now it's off. 
I don't know, since it's out there, I don't care, I just pulled the battery. I'm gutsy like that. There you go, so what we got here, we got a 3600 milliamp hour battery. I wonder how many cells it is. I'd probably guess like a three or four cell battery. Hmm. That'd be my guess. Yeah, not bad though. Yeah. And it's not even very, not very heavy either. Cool, all right, so there's that one. Yep. All right, so we're here with our next laptop and uh, it's the Oryx Pro, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, what do you think about this one? Uh, see, I, I like the fact it has aluminum yeah. here on the top for the lid. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice. It also likes fingerprints. Yeah, this one it's, it's in just, particular just, no, no, oh, yes. Um, you have yourself uh, one vent here on this side, being the left. You got a display port, two USB B connectors. Uh, USB C. C. Sorry, yeah. my bad. Uh, you got yourself your USB 3.0 ports there. And uh, the front port here actually will charge if the laptop's not off, which is wonderful. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if the laptop's not on, just plug your phone in there, you get yourself a oversized battery pack. Yeah. Uh, here across the back, you get yourself another display port, uh, HDMI, your power jack, and then your second vent. Uh, I believe this is the one that handles the processor, and this other heatsink is the one that actually handles the GPU. All right. Uh, here on the right-hand side, no CD-ROM drive. You got yourself uh, Ethernet, USB 3, uh, SD, SD card slot, card. a yeah. SIM card slot that doesn't do anything. Right. Uh, that's. I think it's designed for European SIM cards for one thing, yeah. and then another thing, you know, Linux drivers. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's disabled. Yeah, and then you got yourself your your headphone. So your audio we have a headphone, here. a microphone, and digital digital audio. No, uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's analog. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's. A, I think you, it looks like it's you right can out. configure. Uh, Linux is actually pretty nice. You can usually that might be in or out or maybe mm -hmm. it's something else. I'm not sure. But uh, on the front, you front's got nice yourself, and clean. Yep, yeah, you got yourself your lights yeah, across lights. here. Yeah. Uh, the performance light, which is consistently on, because that that just lets you know, hey, you're using your discrete graphics. Ah. Uh, other than that, you have your number lock keys. You have an airplane light. Uh, see, I believe that. Yeah, there's your hard drive light, and then there's your battery light, and that right there's just the power indicator light. Right. Uh, on the bottom, you got beautiful laptop, non-removable battery. Pretty easy to get into it. Just undo these screws, and then there's your battery right there. Hmm. You can put two M.2 cards in it, and then put two more 2.5 millimeter hard drives in it too. Cool. So. Or 2.5 inch, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, one of system, I'd call the System 76's most popular laptop right now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You have the offset trackpad. Yeah. The keyboard's offset also because of that. Yep. The, the trackpad's know. got this uh, in between the left and right button. This is not a button. Uh, this isn't a middle click or anything. No. It's just a fingerprint reader, and I don't think that actually works. It does. It does not um, work, from what I gather. Yeah. The, you can get it to work, but it, eh, it's yeah. kind of janky. They don't advertise it as being a feature of the computer. It's there. So if you run Windows on it, you'd have that feature, but nobody yeah. wants to do that. That'd be a horrible idea. Yeah. Um, uh, you do have front, forward, forward space facing speakers here. Yeah, that's nice. Which it's is wonderful. Uh, you have your 15 inch screen. Yeah. 1080p or 4K. Yeah, and they available. now have 4K. They also have an array microphone here. Looks like we're running GNOME on this for whatever yeah. reason. That's cool. Sure. I love no, GNOME. I like GNOME. Yeah. I miss GNOME so much. Yeah, I'm a GNOME fan. Uh, so uh, the texture of the trackpad is, uh, I think it's pretty nice. It's a little bit soft, but it's not, I yeah, not plasticky. Yeah, it's, it's necessarily. I wouldn't say it's like premium, like glass yeah, or anything like that. But I'd call it a step up from the uh, the ones below. Mm -hmm. it. Yes, and um, it's a, it's a nice trackpad. I, if I remember correctly, supports yeah, two fingers scrolling and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Oh look, somebody we're running some updates and stuff. Um, and then we've got the. Uh, it does have G Sync, and that does work now. And Nvidia just released a driver update very recently that supports that f that function. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get the higher, I'm not sure if that's still going to be something, but if you get the higher end. Uh, Bonobo, you get the uh, high-end DAC also. Oh, right, yeah. yeah so, um, I haven't plugged anything into the headphone jack that would be worthwhile to test that on mine, but yeah, it, the audio sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. And we've got a uh, chiclet keyboard with multicolor backlighting. You can switch that. I don't... Yeah, you can change it. It's function and then one of those. This right here. Yeah, so that's Woo! hardware controlled, uh, and that's the same kind of setup for the Oryx, Serval, and Bonobo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we got kind of a... Uh, okay, this has a 1070 in it right now. All right. 
That's Still pretty pretty decent. With uh, eight gigs of RAM. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Just, ju just only decent. a 1070. This isn't one and two uh, pick up on the screen very well, but that's all right. Um, yeah, I say I I like this keyboard. This is a nice keyboard. It's chiclet. Yeah. Um, keys are nice and tight. They don't wiggle around. So uh, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And then there's a secret. This is the secret. These buttons right here. Right. And then that, that'll max out your fans. I think that works on most of the System76 laptops, right? Or at least the higher end ones. Them, all of them? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, function one, max function out your one. fans. If you're, if you're like rendering about heat. something, or you're playing a game, and you just, you know. You know it's going to get hot, you might as well just kick it up and just right. leave it there. Um, but remember the key combination to turn it off. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wonder if a reboot would solve that if you, if you forgot. Yeah. Why am I fan all jacked up for? <clears throat> uh, other than that, it's a wonderful little laptop. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's kind they, of big. They it's have, not uh, super heavy. Do they have 17-inch versions of these? I think they do. 15 and 17? Uh, no, not They don't no, have 17-inch no, versions no, of the works? No, not the works. Uh, that's uh, stuff for the Bonovo and, and the, the Gazelle, I think. They're bringing the Gazelle back. Well, I know the Serval's got 15 and 17. I haven't seen it because... Well, the Gazelle was oh, wait, you know what? So it, does, it does have a 17-inch. Yes, yeah. yes, it does have a 17-inch. Uh, I just opted not to have it because smaller laptop, lighter laptop. Yeah. Uh, um, even though it's it's heavy, it's not as heavy. So as this is what you've got at mm -hmm. home. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, it's here. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say that this is probably the nicest laptop keyboard in any of the System76 laptops that I've seen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd agree well, or disagree you, with that. You got the... Well, actually, I think it's darn near the same as... Actually, I like... Like See, uh, this is what's in. This is the same type of keyboard that's in my serval. This is a Bonobo we're looking at right now, and uh, I mean, I prefer a chiclet to this style, just personally. But uh, it's got all the same features and stuff. But yeah, I just prefer the chiclet style. And then, uh, like I was talking about earlier, the Lemur's got a really nice keyboard, but it lacks the number pad. So this, you get the chiclet style keyboard, you get the number pad. Um, so yeah, if you're it's, you're a writer, you might want to. This is a good if you're it's looking. It's wonderful uh, for typing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and then it has the most important feature. Yeah, the Ubuntu the, the logo, super of key, course. The super key's uh, proper. Yep. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm going to probably get lots of spam and hate mail for this. Uh, I, I do have Windows installed on a drive. Oh. But I have it mounted inside of a VM. So I guess that, that works. That's... Because I, I, I'm a Windows system administrator. I have yeah. to administrate Windows system. Can't thing. avoid it. So, you know, I can still turn remote in. So, yeah. Uh, but, I have it on there because games sometimes, because I like games. I like all the games. And this thing can handle VR just fine. Uh, I, I, yeah. I ran all the VM. Yeah, I mean, VR it's got tests. it's uh, the 1070 and 1080 in here. Uh, since the new 10 series graphics cards, they don't have separate M chipsets. So this is the same, um, the 1070 in here is the same 1070 you would get if you got a Serval or a Bonobo with one. Mm, or even like a Wild Dog or any of the desktops. Right. Well, I think that the chips actually do have slightly less CUDA cores than the desktop versions, but... Uh, I, I think so, but that's obviously heat. Yeah, but I know. It's, it's not nearly as neutered as it used to be. But yeah, I'm just saying, like, the you used to have the Bonobo have a different... You can oh, still yes. have two GPUs, which mm. you can't do in any other laptop, but the 1070 in the Oryx is now the same 1070 you get in all of the other laptops that have uh, dedicated graphics. Yeah. From System76. So yeah, yeah that's It's just not the, user uh, upgradable like the the other ones are. Because you, right. you actually remove those graphics cards. Yeah. I'm not sure if that how how the whole upgrade process would work, but that'd be fun to fiddle yeah. with sometime. All so right. yeah, that's the uh, Oryx. That's the Oryx. Next! Okay, cool. We got the serval workstation here. Yeah, and this is the 15-inch version. Uh, I've done videos on my channel about the 17-inch version before. The 15-inch version is a little different. It's got yeah, nice soft like, touch like, top. I uh, guess rubber, uh, rubber. Yeah, it's it, I'd call it rubberized. Would you I don't say know the what material it is. No, uh, no, the sides don't have it, but the uh, uh, the wrist rests do have it. Oh, that's nice. And as well as the top end, it reminds me of the uh, the PowerBook G3s, mm -hmm. uh, 1998 Apple laptops. <laughs> they they had the same kind of soft touch yeah. top. Yeah, the 17-inch version is just hard plastic, but yeah, we'll take a look around the 15-inch here. All right, so we got two fan exhaust ports here. That's the, the AC port. Thing is huge. It needs all that juice for the stuff that's inside of it. Yeah, Very stuff. Two display port and an HDMI on the back, which is nice for keeping the cords out of the way. Mm -hmm. Here on the right-hand side, still no CD-ROM drive, although it kind of looks like there could have been one. Uh, no, that's for the cover. Oh, that's slide the cover itself. The back, okay. Yeah. So you got a USB three. And then USB 2, you got yourself so many inputs here. You got uh, audio in, mic, audio out, and then headphone jack. So maybe that wasn't audio in on the other one. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. 
or lining, I should say. Here across the front, you got yourself uh, your power light, your battery light. Yeah, and, and this, this this does light up with the same color as the keyboard backlight when it's on. Swanky little so, uh, accent light. Yeah, on on System 76's website, this is off in all the pictures, so I didn't oh, realize really? it actually. I knew it turned on when other people sold it. I didn't know if System 76 disabled that, but mm -hmm. they do not. Uh, it does light up. You two more USB three, USB C. Uh, Ethernet. Are either of those? One of these is a Thunderbolt, actually. Oh yeah, that one is actually Thunderbolt. So yeah. Ta-da! SD card. Of course, the most important thing that Apple doesn't believe in. Right. <laughs> Get in there. There we go. And then across the bottom, lots of rubber pads and stuff. We do have a removable battery this removable time. Battery this, this time. is on right now, so we won't we do that. But I've done. Bullet. I've shown how to take that out of my. Let's see. I see the M.2 slot right there. Yeah. How many RAM slots this thing have inside? Of it? Uh, it should have four. Oh yeah. And two are going to be under the keyboard. Two are user serviceable. So the usual, in other words. Yeah. And then here's your. So yeah, like I said, soft touch is all around, all even around all, this. All the whole, yeah. Even the back too. Yeah. So that's nice. very nice if you get in the 15 inch version. So are these just. Oh, I like those uh, indicators there. Yeah, the indicators on the 15 inch are mm -hmm. kind of built into the. Let's see the number lock, there. and then there's a scroll lock button somewhere. No, oh, there it is. Wait. Function scroll lock? Okay. So hey. yeah. <laughs> and and they're they're chiclet like, but then they're not? I don't I wouldn't call them chiclet like. they I think like, this like is just a standard that, laptop keyboard. Like they have this weird separation though. They have a little um, like raised I mean, point ridge on, the, on them. Yeah, yeah, like like the, the button comes like this and comes up. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. But they're all uh, Kind of cut at an angle there. You have another fingerprint scanner here at the front, which does, right, not, does not work. work. Uh, but at least it's not like taking up so much space between the two buttons. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, there's soft touch on. Oh, even the buttons. There too. might be. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, the trackpad's nice on on the uh, servo. Oh, and then yeah, the uh, nice fingerprint split. sensor. Yeah, just if you can't see it. It's just right there. Uh, you try get built into the trackpad. Lower angle maybe yeah, for it. So yeah, and then uh, I love the servos, like the design of the top of it, where it goes up and. Yeah, the this right here. Thing, yeah. And I think this is this is is that rubber or is that plastic? That's this is, oh this is rubber right here around the edge here. Right, like a seal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you spill cool. something on it, you might be lucky. <laughs> right. And you got yourself uh, your Ray microphone. Yeah. Uh, Anything to do with that webcam is on it? Uh, 1080p webcam. Not not anything special, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good for for talking to people. Right. right. If you're just skyping or something. Let's shut it off. Huh? Let's, let's shut off the laptop, pull the battery. Oh, all right, if you want to. So we, we see what the... We're uh running regular old Unity here. It says it has an hour and 37 minutes of battery life left. Hmm. Yeah, my servo, it's got like two hours of battery doing light work on it. Mm. But, uh, you know, this is this kind of thing. The works is what you want to do if you're doing work on the go. This is really if you're just moving your computer between places, but you always got access to a power cord. Oh, that's small. Yeah, it is. Is it's, this the same as the... Uh, not the lemur. What was the... Second one we did? Uh, gazelle? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Gazelle. Well, the Gazelle was the second one we did. Was the, it? The, we did Lemur, Gazelle, Oryx. Okay, well then, yeah, I guess it has the same battery as the Gazelle then. I don't think so. Yeah, it's the same size. I mean, same wattage. I thought, uh, all right, same wattage, but the yeah. Gazelle's was a strip. Yeah, it was a strip, but the, I mean, the up. same wattage. All right. So that, that's interesting. Yeah. Same wattage, wattage battery, significantly less battery power. So there you go. Yeah. All right. That is the servo workstation. All right, so this is the last laptop we're looking at today. The highest end laptop system 76 sells, the uh, Bonobo workstation. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, this thing is oh, basically God, this is heavy. yeah, it's, it's a desktop <laughs> put into a clamshell form. Um, so as you can see, this is the top. We've got some accent lighting there, mm -hmm. uh, so that'll uh, you know it'll shine behind your computer and kind of light up the wall behind you if you've got it up against a wall. I bet that looks pretty awesome for. Yeah, light. yeah. I actually I didn't know if I'd like it. I thought it might be too tacky, but seeing it in person, it's actually not tacky. Yeah, it's not that tacky. I thought it'd be. It does look cool. So uh, yeah, at the bottom we got these big speakers mm -hmm. um, going straight up. It looks like. But, you know how good they sound at all? Uh, well, I don't know if it, if they're similar to my servo. The servo's oh. built-in speakers are actually not great, but. Uh, but yeah, with this kind of a thing, you're going to be using a professional audio interface or a, at least I would, I would assume so. Um, so yeah, this is the back, and this is the awesome fan grills here. Uh, so the Bonobo goes for us like a you know honeycomb, mm -hmm. smaller holes. Um, is that metal? Uh, yeah, that's a metal grill. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got a USB 3 on the back and an HDMI and the power, mm -hmm. which is the same power as uh, Serval and Oryx. No, Oryx uses no one. 
Oh. Orcs didn't use right. the, the four pin. Oh, yeah. Same as the servo, at least. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is the oh, left Jesus side. Christ. So, yeah. We got two <laughs> Ethernet cables. This is great. Like, I don't, if you've used Linux for a while, you've probably had a time when you couldn't get networking working on one, so you've had to share internet. That would be great for having two uh, Ethernet mm -hmm. connections for uh, three USB 3.0s. And then, uh, yeah, your same four audio jacks that you get on the servo. I mean, this, this is also that, uh, right, you can so charge it. This will charge your devices when the laptop is off. Mm -hmm. Across uh, the front here. Front, we got some more grills. And then up here, we got lighting. Mm -hmm. What do those lights do? Uh, that's your uh, power and that's your battery light. Cool. So it flashes red when the battery's about to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Intake, but nobody's business, huh? And then on the right side, we have a USB 3.0 mm -hmm. and an SD card. Actually, that might be that's is that USB 3.1? Uh, it looks like I don't a 3.1. Can tell the difference? Well, like if you look, if you look at the logo, 3.1, maybe. maybe. Yeah. And then uh, two lightning ports. But yeah, two lightning, uh, two Thunderbolt ports. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then uh, two Display Port on the side. And then your and Kensington, Kensington lock. lock. Yeah. The other ones didn't have a Kensington lock, did uh, they? My 17 inch servo has a Kensington lock. I, I would assume some of the other ones. Oh. I didn't see them on any other ones. Oh. So here's the bottom of this thing. Jesus. Uh, yeah, this is like a, a subwoofer. Yeah, so, quote unquote vintage vintage subwoofer. Vintage vintage it's vintage. like a you know, not a not a. It's is nice that, to have. Yeah. There's um, so much ventilation in it. I almost yeah. wish we could take the bottom off of it right now. Yeah, yeah. I've got, on my <laughs> channel, I've got footage of taking the bottom off the servo. It looks pretty similar. Um, dual fan uh, system and everything. So yeah, here we'll open this thing up, and uh, yeah, this thing just looks so cool. Man, it's got I the love that uh, hard drive light indicator up there. I like that it holds the screen so far off the desk because mm -hmm. that's actually nice. You don't want to be looking down. I wish day. I had this for my work computer now. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And then uh, yeah, we got the webcam up here. I think it's like the same quality webcam. Uh, it's yeah. just in a triangle now, so it looks cooler. Yeah, you got a Ray microphone like you uh, normally expect. Yeah. Keyboards. I think this might be the same exact. Yeah, keyboard. this is the same keyboard as the the servos have. Oh, and, uh, and uh, apparently it has G Sync also. Yeah. And, um, and it does have the high quality DAC. And there's your fingerprint scanner. Is the scanner. back of the fingerprint scanner lit up? Change the uh, color. Change the I color and see, see if the that. color changes to the fingerprint scanner. Oh, all right. So the color changing is actually broken right now on this. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, they're, they're working on it. Yeah, this, this is the next version of Ubuntu, right? Mm, this is. I think so. I think this is 1704. We go to go to details. Oh, no, uh, no 1610. 16, all right, well, something's wrong with this one, uh, and they don't have all the drivers and stuff. Yeah, then, well, you know. This oh, no, what it was, the BIOS isn't flashed. So it's got the stock Clevo BIOS. It doesn't yeah. have System76's BIOS, uh, yeah. which allows you to change the color and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you can see the, it, it, I think. I'm not sure if it is back. It doesn't look like it is, but it sure. It's like blue. Yeah, but, like, if you cover it, it's not really blue anymore. See what I mean? Hmm. Maybe, yeah. It's weird. But yeah, um, up here we've got the uh, power button, huge power button, and then uh, some indicator lights. Then the kids will want to push. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those kids. Yeah, so uh, this, the only thing that the Bonobo can do that you can't get the same thing in a servo mm -hmm. is the Bonobo has the ability to have two GPUs in it. Yeah, that's uh, So a lot. you can have two 1070s or two 1080s. Um, if you're doing really crazy scientific work or yeah, if you actually that, need uh, that power right that's not like, gonna no, I my understanding is that doesn't really help for gaming well uh, it does you get like a, like a 30 to 40 percent boost you, mm -hmm. you don't get you don't get hundred percent all right uh, it's it's small but if you're gaming I, I guess VR if you want to do VR for yeah. maybe the next version of uh, the oculus or whatever it doesn't have a higher resolution you might need that extra yeah. power. But you know that's yeah. if you want it. But this, oh yeah. Oh that, my that's... goodness, you can hear those. Hopefully wow. the video picks those up. Yeah. Oh, you know what we should do? What? The yeah, I'm gonna turn it around and show that with the lights on. Now you actually, these are green right now, right? Now yeah. in System 76's, yeah. um, I don't know if in their promotional images the lights are purple. And mm -hmm. some of the bonobos out there have purple lights. So I don't know if you can change that or if it's because the BIOS hasn't been flashed yet. Well, that the BIOS hasn't been flashed, no, I assume you can change it then. I would assume. I don't know how you would change it. Like what? Well, uh, it maybe it goes out the same color as the keyboard. That maybe. would be awesome. That would, yeah. That would be very awesome. But yeah. But I, I do like that. It's, uh, it's subtle. But I like yeah, it's not. really, I, I thought it would be way tackier than it actually is. It, it actually looks pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the highest end laptop that System76 sells. Um, and yeah, you cannot get anything even close to this in a MacBook. 
<laughs> uh, or, you know, uh, I mean, just the, the number of ports, you know, you don't get that in a MacBook, but even if you're looking like, like ThinkPads, like you can't get a desktop GPU or even a desktop processor in a ThinkPad, yeah, the Bonobo and the Servo both have desktop processors in them, um, so yeah, that's... They, they do have an option for the, uh, the Oryx to have it, that they did. Whenever I bought mine, they did have an option to get the desktop one. And right, I like, yeah, yeah. I don't think it justifies the $300 extra it costs. Yeah, for a desktop GPU, though, right? No, for the processor. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. It, yeah, it, it works it's very that. limited whenever, like, hmm. they, they had it as an option. Yeah. So uh, the Bonobo and the Servo right now both have 1080p screens. There was a short time they were offering 4K on their website, but they're not anymore. So I don't know what happened there. But um, they're saying that they're going to have more supply for 4K, 4K. Uh, for the next version. Um, and oh, is this a KB Lake? I guess it is. All of these yeah, laptops we've shown today have Intel 7th generation processors, KB Lake. Um, I'm actually, K. I'm not too uh, sad. Normally I'd be like, oh darn, I've got a 6th gen processor, it's old now. Um, but I don't know if you've heard, Intel actually, normally Intel does TikTok, right? Um, KB Lake's the first time ever they've actually not done TikTok. This is a, uh, a third iteration on the same type of die as 6th uh, and 5th gen. So you're not actually getting a ton of new features with the 7th the generation. Um, and you know, clock speed's the same, cache is the same. But yeah, you do get uh, whatever new features are in KB Lake. I think increased stability, like stuff like that. Yeah, it was just um, more optimization runs better. So yeah. A little better, you maybe like 12% better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Now, now AMD's Ryzen stuff on the other hand, now <laughs> that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. I can't see, wait, I can't wait to see what they have to say about that. Yeah. I just I'm curious what the back of this is lit up. See, this is the purplish. Yeah. I guess it's a whitish purple. Oops. Oops. Yeah. You just but yeah. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I meant to. Uh. But not really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, this is what uh, is on all their promotional materials. So I don't maybe. Maybe, maybe this yeah, is. Yeah. Is... Or no, they didn't. It, was, it, was in the it just took a minute. Thing. But yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, Bonobo, yeah. and that is all the System 76 laptops. Yeah. And, and who knows, maybe they'll release an AMD laptop in the future. Maybe. That'd be nice. That's not saying there's going to be one or anything. <laughs> right. I'm saying that'd be that That nice. has not been confirmed. That, no, no, that, not nothing confirmed even hinted at, at that. No. Not no, at all. Just me saying that would be a nice thing. Yeah. I know that I know there's people out there who wish they'd throw an AMD processor in these things. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Good stuff. All right. A Silverback workstation here. Yep. Wow, look at that little dinky video card. It's a GTX 1050. So this thing has Xeon processors in it. So you, you can get 1070s and 1080s in this thing. Uh, but mainly this this is for uh, processing heavy, uh, heavy workloads. And it's a you know it's workstation class, so much better stability. It's got ECC RAM. Um, so you could use this actually as a server, you know, if you don't yeah. want to rack but you, you need to use something as a server. Um, um. I would say probably the water cooling would be something you didn't want to do on the server, just because more reliability with yeah. that stuff. Uh, but as a workstation, uh, like rendering and stuff, um, I'm just throwing out things that that Xeons might be Look good. Look at all them jobs. Yeah, you can put a whole lot of, uh, of hard drives in here, a whole lot of storage. They've got an SSD down there. Yeah, just, just um, hanging out. Does this support NVMe SSDs? Do you think? Or uh, uh, I don't know. There's M.2 slot right there. All right, well, yeah, it does then. And then, uh, yeah, look at all those RAM slots, too. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot. I would probably guess it supports either 256 or maybe 128 gigs of RAM. Yeah. That's just a guess, though. And, of course, you know, that would be spread across two processors. Yeah. Now, looking online at this thing, I, I don't know if you looked at this on their website at all. I haven't, really. Um, I had looked at this, and one thing that perplexed me was this thing on the bottom. Like, it, they look like wheels, but I was like, they, those can't actually be wheels. They are wheels. Yeah. Roll that thing back a little further toward the wall. Is it oh, locked? Oh, there's, yeah. Okay, there is a lock. That's good to know. But yeah, you can wheel this thing around. So I, that just confused me when I was looking at pictures. It actually is wheels on the bottom of that. So that's cool. Lock on the back too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the lock's handy so it doesn't fall off your desk. Yeah. Earlier when I was uh, playing with this, it wasn't actually on right. I, is it still off? was it? It wasn't earlier. Earlier it was on a terminal or something. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> By the way, so, yeah. this, is how you change, oh. this is how you can change out your filter. Right, there are dust filters on the filter. Yeah, well it has this little... Yep. Majesty mechanism here. Cool. So you just flip that over and tug-ah, it just looks pretty. That's all. Yeah. So yeah, that's the silverback. 
All right, so here we have the Wild Dog Pro. Yeah, but it looks like this is a much smaller, if we look at this next to the Silverback, it's hard to get the perspective, but yeah, this is much shorter, smaller yeah, footprint. Yeah. It has uh, an extra fan slot, uh, one, yeah. 120 millimeter fan oh, it's slot here. Place for a 120 millimeter fan. Now I'm going to open it up. Because that's what I do. I open it, baby. Let's see how that goes. So yeah, we have uh, space for two optical drives in the front, and it looks like, what would this be? Like a floppy drive? Uh, I don't know what fits in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Media reader. Media reader, okay. Um, and we have some front, front I.O. That's a pretty sexy motherboard it got there. This one has water cooling in it, and it has some lighting effects on the motherboard. I didn't realize this one had water cooling. Me either. Ah. Okay, well you kind of kind of need that. Uh, let's see, does it have an M.2 slot at all? Uh, no, but it does. Oh, yeah, right there. There's M.2 right there. You can see in here, uh, this is where you slide the optical drives in and some hard drive base. How many? You know, obviously, we've got some land. These are landline cases, so they're going to be landline. Depends on who you talk to. These are these are nice cases, though. Hmm. Very nice. Have you ever yeah. built a PC before, man? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, have you ever built with, with like, landline cases? No. Or no. no? Uh, the owner of the company I work for, I built him one. He, he's not very tech savvy. He, he, he likes the fact that the case looks very premium. Hmm. And you know, it, it's not like it's like a mix between this one and that one. It's this big, but it's kind of kind of like this. Hmm. It's, it's very pretty, very dirty and neat. Yeah, I was gonna pull up the details. Uh, so this like this specific one has eight gigs of RAM in there. I know it supports much more than that. Um, and this does have the new KB Lake seventh gen processor in it. Uh, it's i5 running at 3.8 gigahertz right now, so that's cool. So yeah, that's the wild dog. All right, so here we have something that's pretty cool. This is the new Meerkat, and uh, this is half the size of the old Meerkat. It looks yes. like an Apple TV. Uh, like that's how small it is. It has an SD card slot inside. Um, does it? Yeah. Right there. Cool. Yeah, that's a micro SD card slot. Yeah. It's, then, uh, it's still a slot then. Okay. Yeah. So the back, uh, this is a nice finish too. This is like a, I guess it's plastic, but still pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, so we got some fan, tiny fan grills on the back there. Uh, USB-C. Got, uh, what is this? Display port, I would assume, or... An HDMI? Maybe. It looks like display port, actually. No, if you look at the cable, that's, it's, it, it is HDMI. All right. Uh, got Ethernet mm -hmm. and uh, two USB ports. Under the power. And then Kensington, uh, Kensington lock. lock. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, and then the front, you've got a couple of, uh, oh, look at it blank. Uh, yeah, the, the, I would assume that might be the. Uh, I think it's a hard drive indicator, maybe? Maybe. I don't know what else it would be indicating. Um, but yeah, it's got USB 3, USB 2 on the front, and uh, one audio jack for in and out. Um, so a combo jack. Yeah. And then got the power light on the front. So yeah, this kind of thing would be great for like home media servers. You know, you put one of these on your entertainment center on your TV. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space, um, but yeah, you can use that to uh, it's also out some graphics. It's a RAM. Is it? Oh yeah, cool. And uh, it has yeah, an it's I3 got an i3 it. processor, so yeah, pretty low power, uh, which I, it's going to use less power too. Yeah, I would assume that it doesn't have room in it for a normal SSD. You're going to have to go in about two most likely. Yeah. Uh, okay. but yeah, there we go. Yep, that's the Meerkat. That is the Meerkat. So this was the last desktop that we looked at. This is the Leopard Workstation, and the reason why we don't have audio in the clip for this one is because we actually forgot about it, and then I went and recorded this video a little bit later in the night, and we, uh, yeah, we weren't doing live commentary on it. But this is the Leopard Workstation, and it is the highest end desktop with a desktop processor in it. Um, so the Silverback workstation is technically higher end than this, but the Silverback has Xeon processors, whereas this has a Core i7 processor in it. And for someone like me who's doing video editing, that can actually be a better thing because i7 processors tend to have higher clock speeds than Xeon processors. They're better for video rendering um, and they're just better for multimedia creation. You don't really need a Xeon processor for that kind of thing. The Xeon processors are more for servers and for scientific computing. Um, so yeah, the Leopard also supports uh, GTX 1080 graphics chips in it, or graphics cards rather. And yeah, you can see it's a pretty small form factor. I was very surprised at how small the tower was. You don't see how small it is just looking at the pictures online. But yeah, this is the Leopard and it's the last desktop. And then here's just a few more seconds I shot so you can see the back a bit better and the side. And in the background you can see everyone talking. 
So yeah, that was all of the products that we got to look at. And uh, like I said, that was really cool seeing all the, the cool stuff that they've got. Um, the lower end laptops, the higher end laptops, their cool desktops that they have. And all of those, like I said, were had recently been updated to Intel 7th generation processors. So that was really great. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video was the uh, the really cool thing that happened on, on Saturday morning. So the last thing before I left Denver, Saturday morning we had a round table and System76 is currently developing some new products and they wanted to get feedback from the super fans and from the journalists and just from everyone on what we all thought of these new products. And we are allowed to talk about these things. They did take our phones and our cameras before they let us into the round table room. They just didn't want us taking pictures of the things because they, they were all prototypes. They were made using crude materials. They weren't like polished stuff. Like literally they were unpolished materials. So they just didn't want people taking pictures of these, these frankly, you know, unfinished products, but they said it's perfectly fine if we're talking about them. So they actually, they were kind of sly with this on, on Friday at the end of the day, they gave us these little boxes and uh, this is an acrylic box and it's, it's acrylic pieces glued together to create a box and it's got my name on it there. And uh, this is the team. There were two like teams. There was, um, I don't remember what the other one was. I was on team Valor. And then, yeah, it just says System76, Legend of the Lake. And if you unscrew this box, there's a screw on each side. And it was really, it was interesting how they, they hinted at what, what they were doing. So yeah, like I said, Friday, at the end of the day, they gave us these boxes. You unscrew the two screws, you pull this off. That's, it's just a box. Like these two pieces, you know, fit together and you've got a box that you can screw together. This is actually, we found out on Saturday, this is sort of like what they're working on for their new computer case designs. So System76 right now, if you're not aware, you probably are aware if you know about them. System76, for their laptops, they are a Clevo reseller right now. So they resell Clevo laptops, which are great laptops, and I'm perfectly fine with them reselling Clevo laptops. I talked about that in my servo review. But they do resell Clevo laptops. They don't manufacture their own laptop bodies and motherboards right now. And then their desktops are, they're custom built, but they're not manufacturing the cases. They're buying cases that I could probably find off the shelf somewhere. Um, I'm not exactly sure what cases they use. They're nice cases once again, but they're not manufacturing those themselves. They're just using store-bought cases and putting their own parts in them. So now that System76 has been around for over 10 years and they're starting to get bigger, um, they decided they wanted to start manufacturing their own products. And this could be a good thing or a bad thing. Their desktop cases is what they were farthest along with, I think, or it was what they focused the most on during the round table. And they had a few different prototypes for desktop cases. All of the desktop cases incorporated wood into the design. None of them were like completely metal. They all incorporated lacquered wood. And that's interesting. It's something a little different. And their, their whole point behind doing all of this um, is, I would argue, you know, a computer's a computer. You can take the motherboard, put it in two different cases, it's the same computer, it's doing the same stuff, but System76, they want you to look at a computer and instantly know that it's a System76 computer, just like you can look at a Mac and instantly know that it was made by Apple. They want that kind of brand recognition, so they want to start making their own cases. So they got these, these case designs with lacquered wood, and they're not just boxes. Um, the case designs have curves on them and they're made so that one particular side is supposed to be facing your monitor. So like if this is my computer monitor um, and this is the desktop, then the ports are actually angled towards me, but then they're not restricting which side you put the tower on because it's made so that you can flip it upside down to go on either side of of your monitor and that's a kind of a weird thing to do um you know you could just make it a box and not have to to worry about flippability but that's cool if you want to do that system 76 started out their their presentation by saying if you go on ifixit and you look at like a macbook on ifixit.com ifixit gives ratings like out of 10 to how easy it is to open and repair a product. MacBooks are like ones on that scale because you can't crack those things open. They're like soldered shut in every way possible. And at the beginning of the day, System76 said their goal was to be a 10 out of 10 on iFixit. Uh, when designing these cases, that was their goal, was to make it easy to open and easy to repair. So their idea was if they have a, um, this isn't exactly what it is, but basically this is the computer case 
and then if you want to open up the computer case you can take the outer shell completely off and on the inside this actually wouldn't be a complete box this would be like one side and then the bottom and then it would just be the motherboard and all the parts just completely exposed on the inside so on the face of it that seems easier you know if this is only two of these sides uh, and no other sides it seems easier to get into the parts when the computers open you don't have to worry about the the sides of the case that you haven't taken off like you do with a normal computer case now this is the part that I think could be an issue one of the parts I think could be an issue is how easy it's going to be to get this giant case on and off of the inner shell and that sort of started this whole thing where they're really marketing toward the average user with this stuff they're not marketing toward power users they're not designing for power users is my biggest concern with all the system 76 new designs again I'd love to show you some pictures they didn't let us take pictures they haven't released pictures so you just kind of have to visualize what I'm talking about but um, yeah, System76 is not designing these custom cases for power users, and I think a big portion of their audience right now is power users, and they kind of, they want to change that with this whole, this whole custom building thing. We want to custom make our computer cases out of lacquered wood so that people know when you're using System76 computers, and they want, they want to make sort of, what System76 says is they're, they sell these computers with Ubuntu Linux on them, and they dumb down in all of their promotional materials, they dumb down what Linux is because they're marketing toward the average person. But then uh, I think a big part of their market is power users because Linux users are power users and power users tend to, to like Linux better than regular old users who are perfectly happy with Windows. And I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to proliferate Linux by marketing toward average users. But here's one of the problems I had with the prototypes that they showed. Um, so the prototypes that they showed, for one thing, the back of the case, you know how normally you have that um, that standard motherboard cutout where the I.O. goes and then you have an I.O. shield that you can optionally put on. I usually leave it off, but if you want your computer case to look nice, you put the I.O. shield in and then you've got a metal square with all the I.O. in it. But you can put any motherboard you want into any computer case you want because there's a standard for that. Uh, this computer case that System76 had, they had picked out the motherboard that they were using and then they just cut out uh, circles for all the audio jacks rectangles for all the USB ports, individual, you know, cutouts for every port. And what that means is that if you ever want to replace the motherboard in your computer, which I would never do myself, but if you wanted to replace the motherboard in your computer, if you wanted to reuse your case for another, uh, another build, you can't do that with these System76 cases that they're designing. And System76 said that they're, the reason why that is is because they don't want people taking the, the Linux-supported motherboards out of the computers and putting in new motherboards having them work badly with Linux and then blaming system 76 for it and I have a myriad of responses for that for one thing anyone who's taking a motherboard out of a computer and then putting another one in knows exactly what they are doing they are not going to call up your support and say hey I replaced the motherboard and now things aren't working they're smart enough if they're smart enough to replace a motherboard they're smart enough to know what they're getting into when they replace a motherboard for another thing this isn't 2009 Linux works on most motherboards just fine so really what they're what they're doing is they're they're just making it so that if you want to upgrade your computer you have to buy an upgraded computer from system 76 that's all that it is it's not about uh, branding like they 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 kept talking about branding and it sounded like an Apple presentation and people other super fans were like saying oh this is great you guys you know you guys sound like you really know what you're doing with design because you sound just like Apple but the past two days, Thursday and Friday, we had just spent two days knocking on Apple, talking about all the things that we don't like about Apple. Apple locks everything down. Apple uses proprietary hardware. And Apple treats their users like they're idiots. And Apple, you know, the new MacBook Pros have zero ports on them. Um, and so here we are at a System76 event where they're asking for our responses. And everyone in the audience is saying that they love it because it looks like Apple. It did not make any sense to me. Another big problem I had with the System76 prototypes that they were showing off at this roundtable were they had they had very little front I.O. So the prototypes they had, they had a power button and they had two audio jacks in and out and then they had two USB ports and that was it. And that's not even a whole lot of front I.O. You know, my tower that I've got has four USB ports on the top 
and two audio jacks and a drive toaster. But yeah, um, so System76 had very minimal I.O. And then some of the super fans were saying, you know, I really like the design of this case, but the wood just looks so nice. It's such a nice texture. I wish you didn't have the I.O. on the front there, uh, you know, making it look not as nice. And I, it was just blowing my mind that we had these Linux users telling System76 to take I.O. off of their computers when we were just, like, yesterday, guys, yesterday we were talking about how Apple sucks because they have no I.O. So now our company, the Linux company, is asking us what we want. And you guys are telling them you don't want I.O., really? And people were saying, oh, there's still I.O. in the back. I'm fine with using, a, 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 like, a USB extender if it means that, that I can have a, the front of the computer case look nicer. Like, no USB port in the front. If I want to plug in a flash drive, I have to have this ugly extender hanging off the side of my computer. But, you know, it's just like how Apple says, oh, all you need is USB-C because you can get adapters for everything else. And then everyone gets angry because the adapters are annoying more annoying than just having the port in the computer. Like, it looks worse to have an adapter than to just have two ports. So, similarly, System76, I very much hope that you disregard all those ridiculous people telling you to take all of the I.O. off the front of your machine, because having a USB extender taped to the side of your box is not going to look any better than just having a USB port on the front of the box. Um, aside from all of that, though, the, the, the new case design looked decent. The things they were, they were talking about with the, the new case, really, they were marketed toward low-end users. This was to replace the Wild Dog uh, desktop that they have right now. And if I was going to get a desktop from System76 right now, I would get a Leopard Workstation or a, a, a Silverback, even though I probably couldn't afford a Silverback, so I'd probably go Leopard. But yeah, like I, I just hope that System76 doesn't forget... Who got you here? Power users got you to where you are today. Please continue to try and serve them as you're developing these new products. I really don't care about if there's a wood texture on the front of your computer. I care about how powerful it is. I want it to look decent, but your current cases look decent anyway. Um, so yeah, I really, I, I'm sorry to say it, but I really don't care who's making System76's cases. You're like, oh, you're going to manufacture your own cases? That's nice. Like, I just got over that whole block of, oh, should I buy from these people? They're not making their own stuff. I reasoned it out in my mind, and I said, you know what, it's worth it to buy from them anyway. And now that I've reasoned that out, now they're deciding they're going to go and make their own stuff. Um, now that I'm, I just got done arguing that it wasn't necessary, and now they're doing it. At the very end of the conference, of the round table that we had, um, like 10 minutes before the end, they just passed around, just out of nowhere, they brought out a laptop, they've got a 14 inch, I think, it was either 13 inch or 14 inch, just aluminum laptop. Um, it was, it was a prototype and it was like hand put together. It was not machined and it was pretty like the, the display was loose on the hinges and even when it was closed, it didn't fit closed all the way, um, nicely. So it was rough around the edges, but system 76 is working on a, a, a like a 14 inch laptop. Now I've got my 17 inch here and this is what I'm more worried about. Once again, like I don't care what they do with their low end desktops. I don't care what they do with their low end laptops. Um, I like Clevo laptops, you know? Um, so if System76 is going to stop selling Clevo laptops and they're going to start selling all their own stuff, once again, I just hope I can get a desktop processor once your new crazy self-made stuff comes out. Because a desktop processor is something not a lot of people do. That's the entire reason I got this. So I'm worried about System76 saying, well, now that we're Apple, now that we're an Apple clone, we can't have a desktop processor because that doesn't make sense to have a desktop processor and a laptop. I'm worried about System76 losing the unique things that I like about them now that they're trying to be more Apple-esque and bring in the, the normal consumer. I'm, I'm worried they're going to lose power users. But yeah, um, that's what I think about their new products. And sorry if, you know, I, I hope somebody, people from System76 are watching this video. I, I like what they're trying to do. I think it's cool if you want to make your own stuff. I get why you want to make your own stuff. Um, but yeah, just don't forget about the internals. That's all. So that's just about everything I had to talk about. Uh, like I said, the, the things I had the most fun with at this event were the unstructured things. Going out to dinner with people, talking to people at the party, uh, just talking about Linux, talking about random stuff. The least fun things were the structured, like, treating us like children, playing D&D stuff. And from what I gather, the reason they had all this structured stuff was because their first super fan event they did, uh, like they didn't have enough structured stuff, just from the little bit I gathered, that's what happened was people were just kind of standing around at the first one, so they decided they wanted to have some activities set up, and that's cool, but 
you could have had the activity set up without like handing out a and d sticker for every one of the activities. Like just have us drive the drones and play with the, the camera applications that you got and, you know, have us do all the stuff that you did, but you don't have to give out player cards for it is all. But yeah, the entire weekend was really, really cool. And basically what it comes down to is I was super surprised that System76 invited me to this event because of how much I bagged on them in my servo review. Um, you know, I, I spend a good deal of time talking about what I don't like about System76 in that review. And so then they say that I won the super fan contest. And I'm like, you know, I'll go. If you're going to pay for me to fly out to Denver, I'll go. But, you know, when I won the contest, I wasn't a super fan. But I kind of am now after flying out there, personally talking to just about everyone who works at the company. Uh, seeing what they're all about, even though there's still some stuff that the, the company does that I'm not a fan of. I've met the people personally, and that just reinforces everything I was saying in the servo video about why I do like System76. I like that there's this manufacturer out there who's focusing on Linux. And even if they do forget about their power users and go full on Apple, they're still going to be shipping their computers with Linux. And, you know, at the end of the day, even if I'm not happy with the performance of their computers, or if I'm not happy with their I.O. or whatever, um, they're still going to be champions of Linux, and that is what they're good at, and I appreciate that they're doing that. So I want to give a huge thank you to System76 for flying me out there, uh, yeah, to the super fan event, because even though I wasn't a super fan when I entered, they turned me into a super fan at this event. It, that That's the name of the event had a different meaning for me because I walked away a super fan. So I'm going to link a whole bunch of the people that I've talked about down in the description of this video. If I didn't mention you in this video, sorry. Once again, I recorded a longer version of this video that was like a ton, just me going, I did this and then I did this and then I did this. That video just turned out really long and dry. Uh, it was really more of a podcast thing. It, it's, it wasn't a good thing to do in video format. But yeah, that was my uh, my trip to System76. So if any of you have questions about the company, if you have questions about my particular laptop or about any of the, the, uh, the things that I saw at System76, whether it's the products or the people, feel free to go down to the comments on YouTube or Dailymotion, wherever you're watching this, or on nerdonthestreet.com. You can leave a comment there and ask questions, you know, because um, I, I feel like I know these people pretty well. And if I don't know the answer to something, I now have sort of, I'm, I'm in a few chat rooms with people. I can find out answers to, to questions if you guys have them. Yeah, this was a really cool experience for me. First time I've ever gone to a Linux community thing. And I already wanted to, I wanted to go to a Linux conference. Um, and I was actually kind of being disappointed. I was in the process of like being disappointed that I might not get to go to a Linux convention this year. Uh, so the fact that I got to do this, this was kind of like, uh, it, it's kind of not exactly a convention, but it's like a mini convention, uh, that's like more focused and honed in on the, the individuals there. Um, but yeah, Nerd on the Street is really cool because we've got two sides, technology and creativity. And, uh, you know, last summer I went with Adam to RTX down in Austin, Texas, and that was like a convention for the creativity side. And that was, you know, a huge thing. And I learned stuff about video production. I learned stuff about music. I learned stuff about creative stuff. And then, um, yeah, Nerd of the Street has the technology side. And I got to go to System76. I got to learn about Linux and uh, talk about Linux. And it's really cool that um, Nerd on the Street is in a, a really unique spot where we don't just have one community. Um, we, we've got two communities. We've got the creative community and we've got the tech community and they're two different communities, but we, we can go to either side and have a good time. I'm really glad that I'm in that position. So yeah, uh, once again, thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, huge thanks to system 76 and, um, huge thanks to all the other super fans for being so awesome. When I met you in person, I might make future videos about this if I forgot anything, but for now I'm Jacob Calvin with nerd on the street and I'll see you guys later. Bye.